It's strength training for women of a certain age. Grab your dumbbells and let's go! All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. And that means that we're gonna get started with some arm circles and high knees, you guys. Oh my goodness, doesn't this feel wonderful already? I'm excited about this one. Welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B, I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And today, and every day actually, <laughs> we're all about making peace with your menopausal body. And one of the best ways to make peace with your body is to make it strong. You guys, as we go through menopause or as we have passed through menopause, pause our bodies our bodies start to do something unpleasant. They start to lose muscle. They start to lose bone density. They start to lose strength. And the only way to get stronger, to keep your bones, to keep your muscles, is to do a beautiful, simple strength training workout like this one. Today, we are all about strength. There's no cardio. There's no jumping, obviously, because there's no cardio. There's no transitions to the ground. There's nothing, I'm gonna say there's nothing complicated about today. It is is a simple strength training workout, but we are using all complex moves. And what that means is that we are recruiting several different muscle groups at the same time for a super effective, super efficient workout. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. You guys, I've got the handy dandy gym boss here. Set for intervals of 40 seconds of work and 10 seconds of rest. And honestly, the, the 10 seconds of rest isn't really because you're gonna need so much rest from the exercises. It's kind of just to shake out a little bit and get your mind ready to do the next exercise. It's much more about making sure that we are very intentional about what we are doing today. Thinking about excellent form, thinking about pulling in our core, thinking about using our muscles in a way that that's really going to benefit them. And probably the best thing that I can tell you about that is that we're going to use moderate weights. I've got a very manageable pair of dumbbells here for me, which by the way, you should not have in your hands right now. <laughs> they should be out of the way. Gosh darn it, I always forget to tell you that before we start the warm up. I feel like you know, you know, we don't have dumbbells in our hands right now. <laughs> But I know there are lots of trainers who want to tell you that you have to lift heavy, 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 heavy. And sometimes you might, that's totally okay once in a while, but it's not something that we need to do every day. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because welcome to my home. Welcome to the chair that holds my dumbbells now. <laughs> The thing about using moderate weights, I know that some of you might be wondering, oh, how in the world can I get results from using moderate weights? Here's how. You don't get results from doing one workout. You get results from doing one workout repeatedly, consistently, maybe two or three times a week. Not necessarily this exact one, but something like this a couple of times a week. You don't have to knock yourself out to get Results, honestly, they come over time with repeated actions. And one of the best ways to be consistent is to do something manageable, to do something doable, to do something simple, and dare I say it, fun. We always have fun around here, <laughs> especially if you are new. Welcome to the Paula B Fitness Channel. We laugh, we talk a lot, and we sweat. We're gonna go ahead and pick up our dumbbells here. We're gonna get started with an exercise that I call, because it is, side step, or not, excuse me, step back press ups. Because we're going to step back while we press up. We're gonna have a dumbbell in each hand, but we're going to step back with one foot while pressing up with the opposite hand. So we're going across the body. Let me go ahead and get my timer here started. The only reason I have a timer going today, so step back, press up, and then on the other side as well. And oh my goodness, did you notice that we're already working on our balance today? Oh yes. That is foreshadowing. I do have some balance work for us today. That means that you're gonna to wanna to pull in your core, really be thinking about excellent form. With moderate dumbbells, you might be able to go fast, and with the timer going, you might be thinking that this is a speedy workout. It's really not meant to be. We're thinking about moving with intention, and we're getting done as many as we get done. The reason I have the timer is so I don't have to count. I don't like counting, I'm not good at counting. Here's 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're gonna do side step curls. Go ahead and lock your elbows right into your waist. Don't let your elbows come off of your waist. We're going to step to the side while we curl up. Put our feet together while we curl back down. Step to the side, curl up. 
step together, curl down. Moving with intention on both the side step and the curling. We're moving our inner and outer thighs here while doing our biceps curls. This is a very simple, <laughs> complex exercise. We're toning muscles in both our upper and lower body as well as our abs, of course. When you've got your core pulled in, we're always working our abs. But it's not complicated. And that to me is probably the best thing about today's workout. Here's 10 seconds of rest. And coming up next, we're doing bent over flies. Pull your core in nice and tight. Going to have your feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Push your butt back. And then from that position, your hands are going to face each other. And then we're going to widen out those arms until your hands face the ground. Keeping your core pulled in the entire time and engaging your glutes the entire time. Having your butt squeezed is how you keep your back straight. Then your big back muscles can lift the weights to about shoulder height, more or less. Your neck is nice and neutral. We're thinking good, strong thoughts while we're flying these dumbbells. Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing to keep your abs pulled in tight so your back is straight. Not letting yourself shrug into that motion is probably the smartest thing we can do. 10 seconds of rest here and coming up next, we're doing something I call tipping stars. So what this means is that we're going to kick out one foot to the side. While we kick that foot out to the side, the same hand is going up overhead and the opposite hand is coming out to the other side. Then we're all coming back to the middle and then we're going to tip out the other way. This is honestly one of the most, it's complicated and complex. Feel free to keep it a little bit closer if you need to. However far you can extend is where you should get to. That's why I'm doing moderate weights today, so that I can actually get a nice full extension. We're working on our balance, we're pulling our core in, we're working those big back muscles. We're still doing some biceps and triceps work here too. 10 seconds of rest. Okay, coming up next is something I'm calling dead squats. It's neither a deadlift nor a squat, it's a little bit of both. Feet about hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider. Back is straight. You're gonna roll the dumbbells down the fronts of your thighs till they get to your knees. Then from there, you're gonna bend your knees without bringing them over your toes to get your butt down a little bit and then back up with those straightened knees and then stand all the way back up. It's half of a deadlift, half of a squat. Really thinking about your excellent form here keeps all the work in your rear chain. You honestly shouldn't feel this in your thighs kind of at all. This is really, really finding and moving your gluteal muscles half of a deadlift, half of a squat, and then stand it back up, 10 seconds of rest. I know, I know. Coming up next, we're gonna do triangles. Feet a lot wider than hip width apart. Almost uncomfortably wide, honestly. Weights start here at your chest. One of them's gonna go up overhead while you're rolling the other one all the way down your leg. Let that hip jut out to the other side. This is a hip complex exercise that also uses a whole lot of abs and upper body muscles. I know you feel that having that one dumbbell up overhead facing the ceiling the entire time really uses those big back muscles. Triangles are one of the most complex and yet simple exercises that we do. Every inch of your body is involved in this kind of work. Going from side to side, and we're not super concerned, 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next is wide open high knees, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna have our elbows wide open. Weights start here at our chest as we bring up one high knee. We're gonna open up those hands and then close them back up. Keeping your elbows at shoulder height the entire time means that you really need to have your core pulled in tight the entire time. Anytime we have our hands above where they would naturally fall, your lower back really could volunteer to help with that so you really want to make sure that your abs are pulled in nice and tight keeping that belly button as close to your spine as you can nice job we don't need to go fast we don't need to get a bunch of these done thank goodness oh my goodness because some of these exercises are tougher than others 10 seconds of rest and then coming up next we're doing a front raise, side raise, which means that we're gonna have our feet about hip width apart, pulling your core. We're gonna do a front raise, 
with one hand and a side raise simultaneously with the other. And then we're going to switch sides. Front raise, side raise. Now this one does not engage your lower body quite as much, except for the fact that you'll notice when you're standing still with your core pulled in tight, it actually really helps to engage your glutes as well. Gives you a nice firm stance. You can't be tipped over when you're holding yourself squeezed but not locked. When it beeps again, of course, we're going to get 10 seconds of rest. <sighs> and you guys, we are almost finished with the circuit. I've only got a couple more exercises and I forgot to mention earlier. I apologize. 10 seconds of rest here. Coming up next, we're going to do peekaboo side steps. So the same kind of side step that we were doing with the curls, but this time we have our hands up a little bit higher. Elbows at chest height or shoulder height. We're going to open them up, open up those elbows, and then close them up again when we step together. Open your elbows, open your feet, <laughs> close your elbows, close your feet. We're not trying to get a certain number of reps done because we are going to go through this circuit two times. We're going to get plenty of reps of each exercise and, and honestly, one of the nicest things that you can do for yourself is to not worry so much about how much volume you're doing, nearly so much as making sure sure that what you are doing is excellent form. Whatever you can get done, and if that means that you're not doing the whole interval, here's 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing delt raise side kicks. Palms face your body. You're going to bring the dumbbells up to your chin or your chest, wherever you can get them to, keeping the, your palms facing your body while we're kicking out to one side and then kicking out to the other. Really not trying to shrug into this, but thinking about moving moving with your elbows, which uses the top of your back. Muscles that feel a lot of tension sometimes, but don't necessarily do a lot of work. By asking them to work really deliberately, it helps them get toned, oh my goodness, and also <laughs> it helps them find out how they should be working normally, not just hunched up because we're looking at our phone or 10 seconds of rest <laughs> or feeling the weight of the world on our shoulders. Coming up next, it's our last exercise. It's side bends, the most deceptively difficult exercise. One weight at each side. We're going to bend to the side. Now, you know how earlier we let our hip jut out? This time we're squeezing our glutes and not letting our hips move at all. This is a teeny tiny motion. I'm barely even getting my hand down to like mid thigh. All we're doing is bending to the side and then standing back up. This is all abs and obliques. This is about as isolated as we can get our abs and obliques when we're asking none of the rest of our body to do any kind of movement. Still surprisingly complex though, right? Because we're holding everything else still. Here's 10 seconds of rest. And then you guys, we're starting the whole circuit again. That was it. You've seen everything. It doesn't get more complicated than that. We're going to do step back, press ups. So as you step back, we're pressing up. As you step forward, you'll bring it down. Find your balance by holding in your core. We don't have to move quickly. I know I'm already moving a little bit slower than I did on round one. On round one, I was like raring to go. Here we go. Woohoo! And then, you know what? On round two, even moderate dumbbells, they feel like work. That's the trick of moderation. It's still plenty of work, but you don't have to knock yourself out. You will still have energy to go about the rest of your day to do whatever you need to do and you've made your bones stronger and you've made your muscles stronger. Here's 10 seconds of rest coming up next. We're going to do the sidestep curls and you've done something wonderful your body for your body. We're toning. Here we go with a sidestep and curl up, pull your feet together, curl down, curl up, curl down. Thinking about the curl down almost as much as the curl up really helps use your triceps as well as your biceps, but also keeps your core pulled in nice and tight, keeps your movements intentional for your inner and outer thighs and your abdominals and obliques by holding those elbows super close into your body and keeping your core pulled in tight. My friends, when it beeps again, we're going to get 10 seconds of rest and then we're moving on into those bent over flies. You guys, a workout like this one, okay, a workout like this one, it 
feels nice and simple while we're doing it, right? Here comes bent over flies. Feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Push your hips back and then fly those arms out to the side. Simple is absolutely the name of the game. Here at this certain age, my friends, there is no reason to knock yourself out to be getting any of the results that you want. In fact, here at this age, the more you knock yourself out, Quite honestly, the worse results you might get. When we were younger, it was easier to work hard, but also our body could recover from it much faster than it does now. Now, when we try and go hard, lift heavy, do something high intensity every day, here's 10 seconds of rest, we can actually get injured a lot easier. Coming up next, we're doing those tipping stars, the most complicated, complex exercise, which is kind of why we're getting it over with. The foot that kicks out is the hand that goes up, the opposite hand pushing out to the side. So honestly, your leg and one hand are going opposite of each other, and then the standing leg and the pressing up hand are going opposite each other. You're almost making like a plus sign. It's a lot more like multiplication for me because I can't get all the way over, but that's what you're aiming for is something like a, a weird, complicated plus sign. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys. The thing about our age and being near about menopause, 10 seconds of rest, when it beeps again, we're doing those dead squats, is that estrogen actually helps us recover from hard workouts too. I mean, aside from its obvious job, here we go with half a deadlift, feet a little bit wider than hip width apart, and then half a squat and then back up to that half a deadlift position and then stand it up. Roll the dumbbells down, squat it halfway, just a little bit. Don't let your knees come forward too far. Really feel this work in your booty. Estrogen helps your muscles recover from workouts. So if you're still doing super hard workouts, and not recovering as well as we used to or as quickly as we used to, the damage could be done to your muscles, your ligaments, your bones, all kinds of things in your body because it's not recovering. Coming up next, we're gonna do those triangles. So feet almost uncomfortably wide, weights start here at your chest. And then what happens is your body feels a lot of stress because it's not recovering from the exercise stress. And what your body does when it feels stress, any kind of stress, mental stress, exercise stress, any kind of stress, your body's one and only biological response is to store fat. You guys, the harder you work, the harder it is to get results at our age. So that's why we're going moderate, we're being simple, we're being gentle, and yet we're getting nice and strong. We're doing great things for our bones, our muscles, our balance, our brain, and our whole body. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing those wide open high knees. And this, this is where the balance work comes in again. This is one of my favorite things to do. Elbows at chest height. Not necessarily this exact exercise. This exact exercise is tough for me. But this kind of kind of gentle balance work where we're just, we're picking up one foot at a time. We're either kicking forward or kicking out to the side or bringing up a high knee. It's not a ton. I mean, this is, this is what, like three seconds, five, three to five seconds of balance work. It's small doses, but small doses are how we get better. And when we get better at balance, we can stay on our feet for years to come. This kind of work has a little bit of good for you. And then when we do it consistently, 10 seconds of rest, it adds up to a whole lot of good for you. Coming up next, we're doing front raise sideways. We get to keep both feet on the ground for this one. Just go ahead and find a comfortable stance. One hand is doing a front raise, the other arm is doing a side raise, then we switch. Core is pulled in tight. Knees are both soft but strong. You don't wanna lock your knees to be able to balance. You always want to be engaged your glutes, the fronts of your thighs, the backs of your thighs, even your inner and outer thighs to a certain extent. You want to be engaging the muscles of your legs when we're standing whew, in a balancing position. Even, even with both feet on the ground, you're still in a balancing, strong position. When it beeps again, we're going to get 10 seconds of rest. Oh, golly. Whew. 
Whew, and not a moment too soon, except for the fact that the next thing that we're doing is peekaboo sidesteps. <laughs> this is, again, arguably one of the more difficult ones for me. We're gonna have our elbows at chest or shoulder height, elbows together, and then elbows nice and wide while we step apart, elbows back together when we step together. Wide apart and step together. A little bit of peekaboo. <laughs> and then close it up too. Really thinking about keeping your core pulled in tight. Once again, once you have hands anywhere above their natural position, especially with something heavy in them, your lower back can really volunteer for this kind of work. By pulling in your abs, you'll make sure that you keep the work exactly where it's supposed to be, which is your upper back. Actually, it's your big swimmer muscles doing this kind of work. 10 seconds of rest coming up next. Whew, doggies. Coming up next, we're doing that delt raise side kick. Palms facing your body, dumbbells nice and close together. As we bring those dumbbells up to what, your chin? Maybe your chest, somewhere around about there by raising your elbows as high as you can. You're gonna be kicking out to the side. When you're kicking out to the side, I know sometimes the, the idea here is to be kind of thinking about your arms. Think about your leg too, your standing leg. That knee is soft but strong. Your core is pulled in tight. You're engaging all those leg muscles. That kicking leg, you're squeezing from the side of your booty. That, my friends, oh my goodness, is how, I'm not gonna tell you we can get rid of saddlebags. That's not what I'm saying. But that is how we can make that area of our body stronger. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is it. We're doing side bends. This is the end of the second circuit, the second and final circuit. Feet about hip width apart, hands are just at your side. We're gonna bend, oh my gosh, wherever your spine can take you, over to the side, and then stand it back up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze from those abs and obliques. Bend over to the other side, and back up. Oh my gosh. Squeeze, 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 to get over and squeeze, 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 dig it up. You guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, when it beeps again, we're done. Oh, but we're definitely not finished. We've got 10 seconds of rest, and then we're gonna do my favorite exercise, and those of you who have been around the Paula B Fitness channel, you knew this was coming. We're working on balance and strength and core strength and everything that we could possibly work on. It's Drinky Birds, of course. Your palms are gonna face your body. A Drinky Bird, in case you don't know, is a single leg deadlift. You're going to raise one leg behind you by squeezing from your booty. That leg that's raising up behind you, keep those toes pointing pointed at the ground. Don't let them kick out to the side. Kicking out to the side is a compensation that moves the work away from your glutes. When in doubt, we always, always, always want to work our major muscles so that we can get the most bang for our buck from these simple but complex <laughs> exercises. We are going back and forth. This is one interval only. We're not going to do more than that. I know how much you guys love Drinky Birds. Yes. I know how much you love drinky birds. <laughs> That's why we're not doing a ton of them. Once again, small doses of balance add up ah, to big benefits. Oh my gosh, what a great job you did. Go ahead and get your dumbbells completely all the way out of the way. We're gonna cool it down and let our muscles come back to the position that they like to be in. Now here's the thing, after we do a strength training workout like this, I know sometimes you're like, okay, I gotta get on with my day, and I totally agree. I will have here for you on screen a slightly longer cool down though because it's a really nice idea even with moderate weights to really stretch out your muscles and let them know that it's totally okay to go back to their normal position. That's why we stretch and cool down after any kind of a workout is to remind your body that it doesn't have to stay in that clenched up position that it's been in for the last however long, about 20 something minutes. Oh, I totally forgot that I still had the timer on. I meant to turn that off. Tap in a little bit while it goes. There it is. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some arm openers. Oh my gosh, open up and then, ah, of course, close it up. Give yourself a big hug and a pat on your back, my friend. No matter if you love strength training or this was the first time you've done strength training or anything in between, this workout was so good for you and I do hope that you had a super fun time with it that it was simple enough and yet complex enough <laughs> that it feels like you've done some great work because you really, really have, my friend. Super, super proud of you. Thank you so much for working out with me today. Again, there is an extended cool down here on screen. There's also a subscribe button. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.